Living in the beautiful Wood River Valley comes with many incredible benefits. Each day, we enjoy beautiful mountains, scenery, and frequently enjoy incredible wildlife sightings. Animal sightings, although exciting, can be very dangerous while traveling in a vehicle. Many highways, including Highway 75 from Haley to Ketchum, post drive safe signs where animals frequently cross. Mr. Sai's physics class at Wood River High School investigated what it means to drive safely. Using physics, the class calculated if the current speed limit of 55 miles per hour was a safe traveling speed at night. To answer this, the class was broken into several groups. The first studied distance of sight at night. Our group was the night distance group and we had to figure out how far in general you can see in front of you at night when you're driving. Um, there's a lot of different aspects that can affect the distance you can see in front of you. Um, one of those is the variation in the brightness of different people's headlights and also um, how much oncoming traffic there is. Um, but in general, a person can see about 150 feet in front of them. The next step in the study was to find the reaction time of the driver. This is the amount of time it takes an individual to see an animal in the road and move their foot from the accelerator to the brake. This is what they found. So for my group, we had to research reaction times of drivers. And with each driver, they vary. But the most common are three different numbers. And the first number is expected. So let's say someone puts a cone like 150 feet and they tell you there's going to be a cone. You have to stop before it. Your reaction time is about 0.7 seconds. And then there's also unexpected. And you would use that, let's say, if you there's a pedestrian on the crosswalk. And your reaction time about then is like 1.25 seconds. And with our project with the deer and elk, our situation is called surprise, and that's 1.5 seconds. Um, most people think that they're faster than 1.5, but when you take in consideration, like when you see a deer and elk, you're not so like expecting it, and your adrenaline starts to rush. So that also adds a couple of like point seconds to your reaction time. And then with the neurons firing, your foot going to the acceleration to the brake, it's 1.5 seconds. So even though it seems very, very long, it's not at all. Once the class knew how much time it takes a driver to get their foot on the brake, the next question became how long would it take a vehicle to stop when a brake is applied. After testing a number of vehicles to determine the distance required to come to a complete stop, the students were able to use their data in a series of equations and determine stopping distance at 55 miles per hour. Our group was to discover the braking distance, which is the distance from when you first apply your foot to the brake to where you come to a stop. But we also had to find the reaction distance, which is the distance you go before you can get from your brain, from when you see the deer, to before you can even begin moving to the brake. Well, the reaction distance through calculation we got as 118 feet. The braking distance at 55 miles per hour was 119 feet, 238 feet in total. That's 88 feet past the deer. So when you first get through the reaction distance, you only go 30-some feet of braking. So thus, you are hitting the deer at 47 miles per hour. These calculations were then put to the test. With help from local law enforcement, an experiment was set up in front of the high school. Flags were set up in different spots. The first flag represented spotting the animal. 120 feet later, the application of the brakes. Finally, the cardboard animal set up at the 150 foot mark. Here is the experiment in action. Major impact. Since 55 miles per hour did not allow adequate time for vehicles to stop, the class then calculated a safer traveling speed. Well, our group was in charge of finding a careful driving speed in which you would be going at and still have enough time to stop or maybe just hit the animal a little bit. And uh, we found out that at 40 miles per hour, you were going to hit the animal but it was gonna be like at a rate of about six miles per hour. Uh, we use a kinematic equation, and once you plug in and solve for x, which would be the speed, it comes out to be like around 39.5 something, and that speed cannot be posted, so we just raised it to 40, which should not do any harm to the passengers, and they might just do uh, some scratches to the animal. So a lot safer than going 55. 
The class even looked at how traveling at a slower and safer speed would impact travelers going through the wildlife corridor between Haley and Ketchum. This is what they found. For our portion of the experiment, we were chosen to test the current speed in the wildlife, wildlife safety corridors versus the slower and safer speed, which is 40 miles per hour as the class calculated. And we tested this by driving from the stoplight leaving Haley to the stoplight at the hospital, driving 40 miles per hour, and then driving back going 55, which is the regular speed. And then the difference in time was only two minutes off the whole trip. And that was without any stops. In conclusion, the class found that 55 miles per hour did not allow adequate time to stop a vehicle at night when needed. At the safer speed of 40 miles per hour, the class found some vehicles would be able to stop in time, while others would hit the animal, but at a very low speed. With these findings in mind, be sure to drive with care.